welcome to Remolations. We're your hosts. I'm Mindy. And I'm Brooke. Remolations is a dream interpretation podcast where we read listeners' dreams. From nightmares to the just plain bizarre, join us as we give you our comedic interpretation of your fucked up REM cycle. This week we're reading a dream from Rebecca that has to do with mothers, two-way windows, and not being able to dial emergency services. Ugh. Worst. We also have some cat naps about back to school shopping. Woo! Feet tentacles. No. 10,000 eyes. We're also playing our favorite game with Mindy, whether it's guilty, innocent, or insane for crimes that have been committed while sleepwalking. All right, bestie. We are wrapping up this month with a slam bang episode. So stay tuned and let's get started. Woo! <laughs> Good stuff's happening, right? Is. Magic it 8 is. Ball said so. Let's let's drink ourselves into happiness. <laughs> oh, that's all I can do. As we continue to destroy our brain cells. Okay. All right, for today's show, I'm going to start with reading a dream from our bestie, Rebecca, in Australia. (gasps) Hi, Rebecca. She promised she'd send one in, and she did. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, I'm going to give a trigger warning for violence and murder in this one. So just so you know. Check the show notes. Okay. She starts. My loves. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) You're our love, too. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Apologies for the length, but please enjoy my dream from the 12th of January, 2023. So pretty fresh. Oh, it's a new, it's a freshie. It's a freshie. <laughs> the dream starts and I have previous knowledge that my mom has completed a test drive for a new secondhand car a few days earlier. Though at the current dream time okay. <laughs> within the dream, I was driving her to the house of the old owner in order for her to collect that muted metallic yellow vehicular addition to her household. Wow. Yeah. Listen to her go again. Wow. It, Love it. it. Is it a cab? Is it a taxi cab? It paints a visual. <laughs> it paints a visual. Get those on discount, I bet. All right. <laughs> she goes on to say, I remained in my car while she finalized details with the previous owner. Although I did have to keep my car moving to separate locations down the tight suburban street, half parking in front of multiple houses while I waited. It's like a no parking zone, no double parking. Uh, (laughs) Are you sure she doesn't live in Chicago? Every street sign says no parking. (laughs) You have to read every little detail on those signs to figure out. And it's half faded. It's scratched out. There's stickers. Yeah, you're going to (laughs) get Eventually, I received some sort of notification from my mother that all was set and I could head off back to my house. So I obliged and was back at my house, although it wasn't my actual house in no time at all. My mother arrived at my house in her new car not long after I did, although I did notice she was acting incredibly strange. And she did mention needing to go visit her friend Lynn. She's a real-life good friend of hers and also her sister's sister-in-law. So, co-sister-in-law, question mark? I don't know. That works for me. Mm, I don't know. That would take too much time to figure out, you know, (laughs) the family tree. Your sister's sister. Yeah, okay. (laughs) In my dream, Lynn happened to... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes. In my dream, Lynn happened to only live a few streets down from me in this dream world. I wasn't entirely aware of how much time was passing, let alone what I was doing in the meantime. But apparently, my three siblings had joined me at my house at some point and were with me when okay. I received a phone call from my mother. My mom was calm, but in a, my, in a maniacal way that happens when someone has a complete mental break and is spookily overaware yet disturbingly unfazed by their behavior. And is describing it to you Ooh, in creepy. excruciating detail. Oof, 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 oof. Now, b- the Rebecca writes, trigger warning. Okay, well, here we go. My mom told us she had bludgeoned Lynn to death with both a lamp and a hammer before stabbing her upwards of 50 times and ripping out her spleen. Only her spleen. Mm. That's it? I mean, Damn. I thought there was going to be more to this trigger warning. I'm like, this is pretty PG. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, really? She pops it in the taxi cab, her new taxi cab, <laughs> drives it to the black market, and lists her best friend's spleen for a few grand. 
I'm just, I'm just <laughs> guessing here. I'm just creative You're just license. guessing. I, it yeah. could be 50, it could be 50 bucks. Who knows how much spleens go for? I, I don't check the dark web that often. Who cares how much her spleen go for? She's not going to live through this. She's been <laughs> no. bludgeoned. She's been stabbed a million times. I'm, give him the spleen. You don't need it anymore. <laughs> right? She's, it's like a murdered organ donation. <laughs> I know. In a weird, twisted way. It's terrible. It and is. a weird twist. And not good for Lynn. <laughs> Becca says, oh, Then there was a small, self-directed comment made by my mom about her needing to buy a new shirt for herself, seeing as the one she was wearing was now ruined. You think? Oh, hmm. Then hmm. she casually told us she's coming home to see all of us kids. Oh, <laughs> no yay. thanks, mom. What's for dinner? I mean, in her tone of writing, doesn't seem too psyched about mom coming over for dinner. <laughs> nope. And she says, "I say kids, but we are now we now range from nineteen to twenty five years old. So if we weren't already grown up, we had to mature the fuck up in a matter of seconds." Yep. Oh no. So my siblings and I immediately left the house and headed down the street, turning at a roundabout to meet the cul-de-sac of an unmemorable road, and then walked a pathway between the houses to a dead end. They're like, I'm not waiting not for mom to come home far. for dinner. I'm not. No, we're, we're getting started. We then passed through a pair of industrial doors that we couldn't see until we passed the threshold of them. The doors served as sort of a one-way window, except the side that faced mm. the quote, I don't actually know whether it had a name Avenue, wasn't mirrored, as one might anticipate. <laughs> it, more, it more projected a kid-free version of the woods that sat behind us. So that's interesting. Okay. There it seemed is. to be multiple people just hanging out with us behind these industrial doors. And I finally had a moment to call 000, the Aussie 911. Oh, good for you, Rebecca. And, of course, I couldn't get through it initially. All right. Are you kidding me? Another one. It's not just so U.S. Awesome. emergency services. It's <laughs> international. Even in Australia. Emergency services. Doesn't work. Don't answer their phones. Doesn't work. Don't try. But Just curl up in a ball and die and take it. <laughs> and then it's funny because Rebecca says, yay to dream phones. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yep, that is dream phones. That's correct. <laughs> I tried again. The second call was answered. I asked for the ambulance and oh, police lucky. services to get to Lynn's address, considering she had just been murdered, and for the police to be sent to my house, as it's where my mother was hiding. The dispatcher told me there was an approximate 15-minute wait before they would arrive, and then they hung up. Then we saw my mother's new car turn at the roundabout and make its way down the street towards my house. We all just pretty much held our breaths. <laughs> yeah. And then she puts as a side note here. Thankfully, my dog Castiel, pictures attached, wasn't home when we were there oh. previously. As there is no way in hell that I would have left him there for my mother to interact with him after literally killing a woman and... His excitable <laughs> ass would have been barking at our hiding spout loud enough to be heard from my house and give us away instantly. Well, I'm glad your dog was not injured. I called 000 I again for an update. Okay, so if we're keeping track, this is the third time she's called emergency services? Yes. One time, no answer. Second time, answered. Third time? She says, I want an update once we hit that 15-minute <laughs> mark. And again, I couldn't get through to an operator. Okay. This is upsetting. <laughs> no, you should just try to turn her mom in for murder. Like, what's so hard about that? She's like, I'm just trying to do the right thing, even though it's like the hardest thing in the world right? to turn in a loved one. But she's like, I'm trying. No one's helping me. I guess my brother had left at some point because he was now calling oh. on my phone. So I put him on speaker. <laughs> ah! He just wandered off. He's like, I'm done with this shit. Now, I also had my work phone, which I only have if I'm covering a supervisory position, which I knew I wasn't. I called 000 multiple other times. Now it's going through as calls to that number, but randomly selecting one of the contacts from the phone to forward the call to. <laughs> what? 
It's like this zero, is zero, bananas. Paul, Paul from accounting. Oh, no, no, no. I, I want like... the police. <laughs> and she hangs up, and it's like beep, beep, beep. Nancy, Nancy from Human Resources. Nancy. Nancy. Damn it. <laughs> I Nancy, just wanna... can you call 000 for me and give him my address? It's not working for me. <laughs> oh, jeez. The call from my work phone now connected with my brother, although we were still on my personal mm. phone. So we work at the same place, so his Wait. details would have been in that work phone. Okay. Though this Not that call... that needs to make sense, but I, right. I feel better knowing. I'm so, like, yeah. How did I, I was questioning that. I was like, how does his it's, number in her work room? But they work no, together. It's like one of Done. those old timey operators that unplugs the wires and plugs the wires. In, and yeah. there's just a whole bunch of shit. Sh- there's a shit show going on over there. And they're just like, KL5, crossed. go ahead. Uh, 52, go ahead. <laughs> Plugging in all their things. But as soon as my brother's call connected to my work phone, it hung up from my personal phone. My brother what? had to call back on mine so my sister could have him on speaker again for the group. Just too much. It, t- group chat. Group text. <laughs> Just, come on. Gr- let's, we, we can do this. Once again, the 000 operators who seemed disinterested were reached one more time via the work phone before the phone had cut to an old colleague of mine who I couldn't determine the identity of. But they were apparently at my house, and whispered, Ugh. Beck, before the call cut off. <sighs> Spooky as fuck. Chills were experienced. My sister mm-hmm. said, I can imagine, that my old colleague had made a mistake by saying my name. It was more the sense of how I was in danger since my name had been spoken. We could finally hear the oh. sirens in the distance, and after another five minutes of waiting... We went home, and then I woke up. What? They, they didn't even wait for the emergency services to arrive? No, they were there. They just waited She's five like, minutes. They're like, hey, it's got to be done by now. You're like, fuck it. We're done. We're we're, we're, we're tipping out. <laughs> she wraps up with, my love to you both as always, Beck. Oh. And I'm going to send you real quick. I'm going to send you these pictures of her dog because, first of all, Do- Beck's gorgeous, and this dog is just so stinking cute i i'm already in love with castiel because i need to ask rebecca personal not a personal question but rebecca just let us know you're a supernatural fan right i know you have to be because no one comes up with the name castiel all on their own but if you did i would love to hear about it but in the meantime i want to see what your castiel looks like and i know i'm probably gonna fall in love with him and go out and buy a dog later today (laughs) <laughs> oh, and by the way, Rebecca titled that dream, Why the Spleen? <laughs> you just kind of rhymed and didn't realize it. Rebecca titled that dream, Why the Spleen? I mean, it's close to rhyming. Why, yeah, Why the Spleen? I, Excellent question. That was my question, too. Okay, I am texting you that picture so you can see this adorable dog. He is so cute. He is so stinking cute. I need to see Cass immediately. And then, okay, Beck, you got to go. tell us, do you, did you have professional pictures taken with your dog? Cause it looks, because it, it looks, looks like such like a fun that. session. So cute. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> as you can tell, Mindy, <laughs> I just, as everyone could tell, I just got the pictures Mindy sent me. And yeah, Castiel is a doll. Oh my so, God, look at Thanks, screen. Rebecca, for sending us the dream as well as sending us the pictures. Always, always send pictures. Yes. We're happy to see. Unless they're like D-pics. We don't, we don't want to see any of those. Don't send those along. No deep. No, but no pets, D-pics. Pets and are absolutely, pets. absolutely fine. Welcome. Always, always. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I love Castiel, Rebecca. I hope, I mean, Castiel, you better live up to my reputation. Of good dogs. <laughs> All right. So let's get into Rebecca's dream a little bit here. Okay. Well, yeah. the overall theme of the dream, of course, <laughs> is a murderous mother and <laughs> some communication issues. But let's start with some of the symbols. So mom gets okay. a new car and the car color is yellow. And if I we go into yellow, usually that's a color of happiness, joy, Sunshine, it's it's a good color. It's a positive color. Right. So Very it seems like color. things are going great in the beginning of the dream until mom gets 
away from the you know the previous owner. Maybe this maybe this car was haunted. Maybe it had a demonic presence or something. Because as soon as she got in that car, she's like, "I'm gonna go murder my friend," which not good. No. no. Oh no! It is. You're absolutely right. Not good. <laughs> Now, the thing that I find interesting is that the mom called and told her about the murder, but it wasn't something that she right. witnessed, which normally in dreams, if we think of something scary or something bad happens, mm-hmm. it's usually either happening to us or we witness it happening. So having a murder just be told to you over the phone, I think, is something a little bit different. Yeah. This is like third party information. <laughs> Yeah, it seems very real life, right? Like, you don't wake up and, like, usually hear, oh, so-and-so died. But you do wake up when someone makes a phone call and tells you, you know, like, it it, it just seems more realistic, this situation. Yeah, but it's not common in dreams. So I find that interesting. No, yeah. Is there some sort of dynamic or some sort of thing that Rebecca is dealing with that maybe she doesn't want to deal with directly? Is there something in the family dynamics that she's you know, aware of, but she's like, yeah, I'm just, I just want to distance myself from this situation a little bit. Mm-hmm. It wasn't firsthand. The murder was very violent. I mean, we're talking yeah. lamps um, and hammers and a spleen removal. This is a whole, this is a whole cross between clue and operation. This is a mess all around. <laughs> we have murderous location uh, many locations many weapons and we've got spleen removal this these are not board games you take to real life people it was beck's mom <laughs> in the friend's house <laughs> with the lamp and then like she and reaches down and Beep. and then she has to take out the little i hated operation hated that game oh well you gotta have steady hands my yeah. Now, if for our bestie that doesn't know what the game Operation is, mm, uh, it was a yeah. very popular game back in our childhood <laughs> days. But you, it you way it, beyond it, our childhood days, though. It's been like, around. What forever. year do you sure. think that came up? For the fifty, I guess the fifties, like maybe. Sure. Yeah. But the point of the game is you get to pretend to be a surgeon, so you have these like little tweezers, and you have to take out things like <laughs> butterflies in the stomach, a funny bone. I mean, they made him sound like it wasn't like you're not ripping out a spleen for the black market. But still, if you didn't have steady hands and you touch the sides of where you're taking it out of, you touch the metal with the tweezers, it gives the most terrifying beeping sound. And that's uh, that just or sensory It's almost wise, like a vibration. It. It, oh, yeah. Vibrate. It's like it's a like, shock. It, yeah. It's like almost like it's not it's not a shock, but you I are startled like by shock. it. It is a vi- <laughs> it's a vibration that when Ugh. that metal touches that metal, you, you immediately like, no, I fucked up. Like, the game's got it right. They know when you're doing it wrong. There's I... no fucking Mm-mm. light when you get that bread basket back in there <laughs> or get it right. There's no cheers or applause. But if no. you mess up that it, butterfly. It gave me <clears> so much <throat> child anxiety. That and the other one was that like game where... Um, you matched all the pieces, and then like the board popped up. What was that one called? Like it had a timer, Wait, and like what? Um, there were like the, all these little pieces. The board this popped game. up. Yeah, so like you it mean has, like, like trouble plastic thing. Mm-mm. No, it is like plastic, and you push the board down to start, and you have to match all the shapes to their little holes. And there's a timer, and if you don't get all the shapes in in time, then it pops up, and all the like, little pieces fly everywhere, and it. Also scared me. I don't know what this game is, but I want to play it immediately. It per- I won't play it, it with you, Mindy. Is it called Perfection, maybe? This must just be one I never played, but I will never play it with you because I don't want to scare you. Thank you. I, oh, yeah. It's, it's called Perfection. That's the game I'm talking about. I've never... I mean, it sounds like something, but I feel like I want to play it. No, no, no. So I won't ask you to play it. I appreciate that. I like Monopoly. <laughs> There's nothing buzzing at me. There's nothing popping out at me. I liked oh. not to be surprised. Thank you. That's all. Can't well, let go. so so mom mom murdered Lynn. So obviously bad. But the fact that her mom, it's her mom, and when and I'm not, and I'm not aware of your relationship with your mom, Becca. And it doesn't necessarily have to be your mom in real life. It can be a motherly type figure, someone you're close to in general. There's some sort of right. trust there, some natural trust, and all of a sudden that's being 
yeah questioned yeah it's being altered or yeah yeah like everything yeah oh it's not a good situation so then mom's like okay i'm coming home now i'll see you guys soon all the kids and then it's just like they're (laughs) gonna dip they're like you know mom just murdered someone we haven't done the dishes yet and we should leave We haven't done the dishes yet. That's the, you know those chores. Mom you gotta get better done not before come home before we do our chores. Mom might have killed someone, but we're gonna get the chores done and get the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want her coming after us too. <laughs> I was such a procrastinator when it came to that. Like my dad would get home at you know five thirty, and it would be like five twenty-five. I'm like, gotta do the dishes, <laughs> and I would like rush. <laughs> yeah, you're like super speed. <laughs> Just Nothing as long like, as it's done before, and then you're, then you're sitting on a couch reading a yeah, textbook. He's totally. like, "Oh, my lovely daughter Mindy, she does yes. her chores so well, and she I, studies so well." <laughs> I'm good under pressure, so you know I just like She's to good build under that pressure. up. <laughs> but Bex and her siblings are like, "We're taking off. We're leaving." They hide from mom, but how they get to their hiding spots weird because they're going through all these twisty roads. They're going down into this cul-de-sac. They have to go th- down this path, and they get to these like big doors which are out of place right and these doors are not like any other doors so that she was so descriptive on this so i think that needs to, we gotta take a minute to talk about that yes she said please. it was like a window like a like a, almost like a two-way mirror but it wasn't a mirror so they could see out to their mom driving by but she couldn't see them oh mirrors and dreams can mean a lot of things Ooh. often self-reflecting like how, what do you think of yourself what do you see in this case, it's almost like that mirror, that that window was purposely hiding them. So it's, what are you trying to hide? What are you not trying to show about yourselves? Wow, Mindy, you're blowing my mind right now, girl. Wow. Okay. And she also said behind that door, there was many people. It wasn't just them hiding there. So it's, that also is very interesting, yeah. I think. Like, you're not the only person in the world who likes to keep things themselves like sometimes there's pieces of us that we're not willing to let someone in not to let someone see and sometimes we have to stop and think about that are the are we letting the right people in to see us don't let your mom in obviously not good no but (laughs) nope don't answer that door but it is tricky because it is hard to open your heart and your trust to somebody because you don't know what's going to happen and it is very, very hard to give up yourself to do that. So I think it's very interesting that Rebecca was smart enough that she knew who of all people, your mom, would right. you let in your door? Mm-hmm. She knew the wherewithal to process this and be like, no, mom can't come over here because she's a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get to the night, the 911, sorry. Then we get to the zero, zero, zero calls, like the emergency calls <laughs> and and keeping track, I think it was at least five times she's tried to call at emergency least. services. So many times. And, and it gets so through like once or twice. It's like a 50% respond rate. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should be 100 personally, but, you know, I'm no government That's official. That's the point. Mm-hmm. I think Beck said it best when she said, uh, yay, dream phones. So, <laughs> <laughs> again, never yeah, working. that was good. And to get so crisscrossed on your lines, like she's calling, they're not answering, it's 15 minutes, then she gets connected to work people, and where's the communication breakdown right now? At this point, I'm, here's here's my question to Bex. What in your life, what, yeah. what dynamics are changing? Is it your family dynamics? You know, mm-hmm. you mentioned that you're all young adults, and, and that's a hard time for a family because everyone's kind of off and doing their own thing, and as I'm getting older, yeah. and I know in my family, we are all adults, we all have our own children, it's harder for us to get together anymore. And so our family dynamics are changing. Mm -hmm. So what is it in the dynamics, either of your family, a work situation, or perhaps a friend group where communication's not there? Maybe people's feelings are getting hurt. And we don't know how to respond to that because, you know, it's kind of behind that glass door. Yeah. It may not be on purpose and you don't even realize it or what have you, but there are things to kind of be cognizant of. Yeah, and a, and the brother, he left in the dream. You know, he's off doing his own thing. The sister was on mute. And so it, it, Bex is like, am I the only one here trying to turn mom in for murder? Like, can someone help me out? I'm. So are you dealing with a situation that maybe you feel like you're dealing with yourself and you're feeling alone that the fact you're the only one right. 
dealing with such situation. That's kind of what I think. I I agree. No, I agree. And I think the severity of murder Mm -hmm. only represents how strong whatever she's dealing with in real life is. It's obviously very important because murder is a big deal. So whatever she's dealing with in real life is coming through subconsciously as a murder, which is huge. So I think it's a big deal for Bex. And I, 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 oh, Bex. Yeah, let us know. And just cuddle up with your little pup and just, you know. Cast you out. Yay. Cuddle cuddle your pups. Give them some kisses for us and, you know, keep them coming. Thanks for sharing, Bex. You send more pictures. Yes. Always. Hey, bestie. I know you're super excited. We are having our live show April 1st. And yes, it's called Not a Joke Live Show because it is (laughs) April 1st. But we are going to be live, ready for you and all your questions on Saturday, April 1st at 7 p.m. Central Time. Get your questions ready. We're going to answer anything. Absolutely. Everyone can join. Again, it's Saturday, April 1st. And this is not a joke live show. It is Saturday, April 1st. And it's at 7 p.m. And this is a free virtual event because we love you. So make sure you check it out. It's going to be good. Yeah, you can see the link in our show notes or just search for Remolations Besties on Facebook. Yay. Okay. That's going to be an incredible event. But until then, I think we have some cat naps mm-hmm. to read. We do. Well, I do. I hope you do. I do. do you want I to have share a whole one? stack here. <gasps> do you want to get started? A stack? A stack. Yes. Let's do this. <laughs> a stack. <laughs> okay. As usual, I'd like to start with kind of a short and sweet, funny one just to yeah, yeah, shake yeah. it up a little bit. And I read this one and I was dying. So. This is Frank, and he's from Yuma. Yuma, okay. Yeah, it's very hot there. I've been there. It's very, very hot. Is it in Arizona? Arizona. Is it in the desert? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's near the border of California. So it's like a a crossing point, but it's hot. Hot, 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 hot. hot. Okay. I was running through a maze, and all of a sudden, Kermit the Frog jumped out with a knife. Of course he would jump out. J- oh, Mindy, you're so good. Huh. Jumped huh. out with a knife. Well, it's not so I good, I kept though. running until Dustin Hoffman rose <laughs> from the ground and shot Kermit. And then I woke up. <laughs> what? I couldn't help myself. I read that. I'm like, I know it's only like two sentences, but it's brilliant. That's a star-studded <laughs> event there. You've got... Um, a hash, and Dustin hashtag. Hoff- yes. Do you- what does Dustin Hoffman dream? <laughs> do, do, do you think he goes? Is he a Dusty? Does he go by Dusty Hoffman, Mister Dusty, sir? I don't think I don't Dust Mister Hoffman. I don't think he <laughs> seems like a Dusty though. I feel he, like no. he feels like Mm-mm. he's Dustin. He's not Mm-mm. a Dusty type of. Maybe he has another nickname, but I don't think it's Dusty. D man. But I. I have a feeling if someone calls him Dusty, it's like a trigger for him. I don't know anything yeah, about do that, but I just have a feeling like, you know, sometimes someone calls you something and you're like, Mm-mm, no. My name. I mean, obviously my he's got name. anger issues if he stabbed Kermit the Frog. <laughs> like. he No, he shot he's him. Not, oh, he shot he him. He shot so, him. He shot Kermit. Kermit, Kermit the Frog. came out with the knife. Oh, oh, mm. so it was like a duel. It was, I mean, self-defense. I don't know. I, in a Frank. D- mm. <sighs> a Kermit and Frank duel. I'd watch that. Kermit and Dustin duel? Can you do it? No, Is I it- would do that too. Or the dreamer Frank. <laughs> I mean, a Kermit dust at high noon. I would watch that. Of course. I'm I sick, mean, but I would watch it. I I mean, my money is on Dustin. Kermit- it really is. It should I mean, be. He's got, web- like, cause he's got you- webbed fingers. Like, how does he wield a knife that well? But it's, then you have a puppeteer that's probably has fingers what? that can do Brooke, this. no, 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 no. No! Kermit, Kermit I didn't is mean that, but... Bit... What? There's a... There's no, a Kermit's a frog. A... No, I didn't uh, okay. say that. Did uh, I? Uh, are you sure? No, Kermit's okay. fine, Mindy. Kermit's fine. He's still going to lose it. He's still going to lose the match, I'm sure. He might. 
He but might. yes, he's Dustin, just a frog after all. Let us know how it turned out and also let us know what you dream. We'd appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Dustin, let us know. And Frank, let us know if there's any additional details. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good one. All right. Thanks, okay. Frank. I've got one from Mary and Mary's from Detroit, Michigan. Oh. She goes, I am confused about this dream. I had a dream a couple of days ago and I can't get it out of my head. I had a dream where someone oh. was sitting on my chest while I was lying down. The person had no mm. face and their body parts mm. reminded me of a wooden puppet. What? No. Why? That's what? weird. This I didn't know your dream. I never know your dream. This, so that's, that's I know. bizarre. Okay. Okay. This is why it works, Mindy. We're on the same Boy. wavelength. Did and they like leaned. Sound effect? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> and they yeah, leaned okay. down to my face, saying, "I have ten thousand eyes." Holy shit! <laughs> and tons of tiny eyes started appearing on their head, and the head started spinning around. What? And then I woke up in the exact wow. same position I was in the dream. It's been bugging me ever since, and I'm trying to figure out what it means, but I can't. Somebody's I have, watching mm. you. No, like, <laughs> so, oh, I that's too many eyes. That it might. That's too many eyes. I feel like it might mm. not be human. Can you? I don't want to make any assumptions, but definitely like, not. This sounds. <laughs> Do you really? It does has ten thousand eyes. You don't think it's human, Brooke? I don't. <laughs> what was the it's giveaway? <laughs> Can you well, imagine? I only have two. You only have two. I've never seen anyone with ten thousand no. eyes. So Can you I'm imagine how it's... long it would take you to apply mascara to ten thousand pairs of eyelashes? Like, ugh. could you imagine? How bottles would that take? If you needed contacts, if you <laughs> needed contacts, you have to put in ten. That's your whole day. Put in your contacts, and then you're yep. like, I get lace it. I mean, just, them all just out. lace up them all. <laughs> Too many eyeballs, but that's a terrifying dream. A, a quick analysis: I think Whew. you feel like you're under scrutiny for something, whether it be at work or at home or with friends. Like, yeah, something you're feeling highly to- scrutinizing what you're doing, and you just need to just tell them to stop. Just get some eye patches for all of those stop. eyes. Blind, uh, one really yes. big eye, eye patches uh, blindfold. And you- one really big <laughs> bind- blindfold, just and you just be like, now listen. You can put it over like your whole face, nose, mouth. You know, just like one, a bag. Why just don't you bag. just get a bag? And <laughs> that's the easiest way to take yeah. care. <laughs> Thank you, Mary, oh, no. for sharing that. Oh, Mary, sorry. Okay, George, Mister George from Potosi. Potosi. When I was quite young, I had a very specific fever nightmare Hmm. where I would be lying flat somewhere in the darkness. A clock was ticking, continually getting louder and Uh. louder until it became overwhelming. All of a sudden it would stop and there would be soft laughter Mm -mm. next to my ear. Mm, I don't like it either, Mindy. Nope. Mm -mm. I would wake up instantly and think it was fine until the ticking started again. Oh, so it was happening in his dream. There's and so in many real life. ticking. Okay, so it could, it could be like a bomb's gonna go off. It can be like time slipping away from you. It can be like ticking. Ew. Ticking's yeah. bad, but then Countdown to hear that sensor. laughter, that's that like laughter along with it, like it doesn't. God, I don't wanna throw another demon out there this episode but this doesn't sound right it doesn't the mm-mm. the auditory like laughing thing george wow very creepy wouldn't it be better if it was like ticking down and it's like surprise it's a it's a good thing yes. we're all gonna eat ice cream now see well, maybe it's it all is. about it's all about how you think of things they're laughing because they're so excited to get rocky road you know what? That's you are the epitome of half cup full. <laughs> you are. I, I love you for that. You okay. really are. Well, okay. Right. Well, thanks, George. Thanks, George. This next one comes from Dan, and I had to look up how to pronounce the city name. It's Waxahachie, Texas. 
Oh, I like the name. That's a cool name. Okay, Waxahachie. Okay. That's a tough one to say. I dreamt I was publicly humiliated for having dirty bed sheets. I dreamt I was. Oh, (laughs) no. I dreamt I was in college and there was an assembly. We didn't know what it was for. They brought my bed sheets out and held them up for everyone, (laughs) and they were disgusting. I'm okay. Let me first say I'm sure they were disgusting. College but kids? why are they yeah, pinpointing you? And why is it happening on a college campus? Because I guarantee if they brought everyone's sheets out, they would be at no. least half, if not more, disgusting as yours. Public shaming, never good. Here's the example. Full of dirt, fungi, bar- barnacles, <laughs> and literal shit. Or nickels! <laughs> And a little shit. <laughs> and literal shit. What are you what are you doing in your bed? There's a bathroom for that. They, they brought my sheets out because I broke conduct and I was being kicked out of school. I begged my case. The whole school talked about me. But when I went to my dorm to hide and waited out, the stench was so bad I had to crack the glass door. Oh god. And then I woke up. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh no! Just scatological dreams. Just throw it in the wash. I dude. mean, Dan, just throw it in I the do. wash. But like scatological, you know, it's like it's embarrassing. We all have to do it. But like, if it happens in our pants, we all feel helpless. <laughs> like what? I, depending on how far or close we are to either a bathroom or a laundry facility. Oh, it can be bad. My, but here's my question. That's a, How did the barnacles yeah. get there? I can understand the other stuff. <laughs> but we need a little more explanation on these barnacles. You're rolling around I, with I SpongeBob or something? I want the episode to be, where are the barnacles? <laughs> <laughs> How did they get in the bed? I don't know. Dan, let us know. I don't know either. You know. Please and thank you, let us know. But absolutely thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one actually comes from Homer, and he lives in East Orange. Okay, hmm, East Orange. Yeah. J- Is there a West Orange or North Orange? North, South Orange? Maybe. Well, but this he is East. lives in East okay. Orange, which right. is obviously the best, the best orange side of Orange to live yeah. in. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> My feet started to itch. Oh, Suddenly, okay. they started bubbling and little spots started appearing Mm. these spots grew into pus filled boils stop yuck i'm desensitized to most things like blood guts whatever but pus is one i can't but but pus at that no i mean maybe east orange is not the best side of town i don't know it is mindy we're gonna make it better so we can get better health (laughs) care everyone deserves it then Everyone deserves it. So these pus-filled boils, right? Yeah, yeah. Then they grew into tentacles. 20 to 30. I I know where the barnacles came from. I figured it out. Mindy, you already know what happened. This is just so random. This is just so random. Okay. So 20 to 30 pus-filled raw painful tentacles oh come on each about an inch in diameter on my soles <laughs> thrashing and waving around could you imagine on the soles of that means you can't stand you well, can't I mean walk maybe it's like without tentacle, it, tentacle walking like oh maybe tentacle walking otherwise you're like boot scooting onto the bathroom like you're on your knees or army crawling or something like okay oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm with then you, I guess. they suddenly died and began drying out Good. into dead scab tentacles. So yeah, at I least guess. the tentacles are dead. Uh, sure. I mean, they're not alive, dead. Um, okay, I'm and still with you, barely. <laughs> You're still with me, barely. <laughs> they went the consistency of burnt wood and then remained on my feet. And then I woke up with a gasp. But wait. Oh, okay. I could oh, no. feel those tentacles on my feet for about two days. Ooh. No. Homer! 
That's we bananas. Eat. Ew. Tentacles and pus. Ew, David. No gross. and no. No. Ew, David. Ew, gross. No, I can't do this, Homer. Ew, oh, God. Homer. Okay, moving on. Just going to have to move on from that one. Let's not dwell. Let's continue on. Okay, here's a short and sweet one. This one comes from Stephen, and Stephen's from Columbia, Missouri. Okay. I dreamt I went to this chick's house to score. Nice. I went. (laughs) I mean, that's not all. (laughs) Hold on. I I, I have a feeling. (laughs) I went to pee and flushed her toilet, and the water ran out of the bathroom, out of the toilet, and start soaking the living room floor. This All of is sudden, horrifying. This is everyone's worst, right? worst nightmare. nightmare. Like first date or first toilet. It's someone's house and like th- there's a toilet issue. <laughs> All of a sudden, her brother walks in with a fish dog. The damn bass the has... fish dog? Well, he'll explain it. Hold on. He explains, <laughs> okay. damn bass had a tail like a lab. And he had the nerve to have a collar on the fish dog. <laughs> and then he woke <laughs> up. <laughs> nerve to have a collar on the fish like, dog. If the tail is a dog and the first half is a fish, then where would that collar even... Does it have to like go behind the gills? Like, how yeah, does it like stay where, on? Because, and how... How do how does a fish... How does a fish and a mammal, like, survive? Because they... One needs to be in water... <laughs> To live, and one needs to be able to breathe oxygen. So, does is this like a okay? So, the fish sleeps in the water at night, and, and then it's just, just like a down dog down on, on the, the backside. I don't know. Wow. I I mean, I would keep dating Who? this chick, and hopefully, things worked out for you in it, even though you flooded yeah. your living room. But you know, hey, you have to don't see a fish. Give dog. up on that. We've all had embarrassing encounters. Another another ocean dream, right? But if she yeah. holds this against you. Move it right along because she's not the right gal for you. Get your own fish dog. Yeah, I agree. Get your own fish dog. (laughs) Okay. So this final catnap I have is from a lovely lady named Brooke from Dubuque, Iowa. (gasps) It's yours. Oh, it's mine. It's mine. I thought I'd share one of my own catnaps. Since hey. I've been doing it a little more often, you have I've to. just been dreaming been whole, like crazy, Mindy. The first year of the year, this podcast, you not Nothing. not a nary, nary a one, and now nary you're like a dream one. machine. Now I'm a dream machine, but here's the problem: I have to get better because I I know I'm having these crazy dreams. Mm-hmm. I know it because mm-hmm. I wake up and I'm like, yep. <gasps> and yep. before I can even go to write or record, it's gone. Five seconds. I've got five seconds before my dream's gone. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm working on it. Okay. I'm working good. on strengthening that. But that. that's something interesting to point out because most people are like that. And unless you train yourself yeah. to remember your dreams, your body is made not to remember them for a reason. Because obviously, as right. we've seen tonight, they're mostly horrifying or weird. Your mother murdering someone, 10,000 yeah. eyes staring at you. <laughs> your body is naturally trying to shield you from your dreams. But we can teach our bodies to remember them. We can teach we our can. minds. Yeah. We can, and I'm working on it. I'm, I'm working so on it. I'm so proud of you. you know, I feel like I have some crazies out there. I know I've had some crazy yep. dreams. I just can't remember them. Okay. So, on the other hand, this catnap I'm about to share is anything but crazy. Okay. But I thought you, Mindy, might enjoy this one because you know me so well. <laughs> can't wait. So, here we go. I looked down at my hands and I was holding an orange notebook. I didn't (laughs) want the orange notebook. She wanted a pink one. The red one. Oh, okay. Yep. Obviously, uh, yeah, clearly. It was back to school shopping day, my (laughs) favorite day. And this is not a joke. Like, it was my favorite day every year. Yes. Mm hmm. I was at a store and had my little basket with different pens, markers, highlighters. Wide out, loose leaf paper. Remember, like, do they even ask for that anymore? Remember when loose leaf oh, paper was see. like something you not had to really. get on I mean, your? My kids are what mostly they in loose leaf paper for. Not nah, nothing. Most of my, I mean, my kids are all like. <laughs> I mean, my youngest is in junior high, eighth grade, so they don't have like lists anymore. But I doubt they. It's all on their Chromebooks. I don't think that's a thing anymore, right? Yeah, it's yeah. all digital or notebooks. By the way. 
College or wide ruled for you, Mindy? What do you prefer? Oh, I'm going with college. In a notebook. College. College. <gasps> we need to add this to our Zen diagram. <laughs> is that what it's called? What is it? Uh, Venn. It Venn. Venn diagram. You're Venn. Close. Venn. Yes. We need to add this to our Venn diagram. What Mindy because... likes, what Brooke likes, and I'm there's a... like a circle in the middle that we both like. Like this. I'm wide ruled 100%. Oh, so we're opposite. You're college ruled? Yes. We're opposite. The more on this I can one. fit on that paper, okay. the better. Yeah. Very precise. See, my handwriting is so big, I feel like you it have needs had big the room of a wide rule. Yeah. Yep. I agree. I agree. All right. So trying to find that right notebook, and it's not the fucking orange one, I can tell you that much. So I'm trying to find the right notebook to match my folders. Of course you were. And you probably match like it to you your polo. You probably match it to your socks. And, my and it'd be socks. a good day. <laughs> and you're scrunchy. It would be a good day. Yep. It would be a really good day, right? Yeah. Of course, I needed a binder too. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But that would have to come later because it had to be very specific. Okay. I would know once I saw it. And oh, I feel yeah. like you might have like been in that boat where you're like, I know I have some things I want to get, but I'll know when I see it. But I wanted to take my time looking at the options. Would a one inch be fine? Do I go for oh a full two this inch is such binder? A yes. Stride. Okay. Inside clear pocket, no pocket, decorative color outside, or a Lisa clear Frank. You could slide some. Trapper oh, keepers. Lisa Frank. The options. Oh, so many options. Options are endless. Yeah. So obviously. That's why that had to stay mm, for yeah, later. And I think it. my brain yeah, knew it. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> but at the moment, I was still holding this goddamn orange notebook. This becomes a real struggle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I have everything I need except this goddamn orange notebook is the only one left. And I clearly needed a purple one to match my geometry folder. The stress. I started to cry out of frustration. Would I ever make it through the year with this orange notebook? The tears started to fall, and magically, they started changing colors like a watercolor. The, so my tears yeah. oh, were falling my. on the orange notebook. Oh my! And then they started to swirl and change into this like wonderful watercolor Beautiful. world. Then I woke up. <laughs> Oh my god! But that was good, though. That was good, and it's it is a you dream. It's a you dream. Like, but there's so much the it colors is a me. It, and the organization. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> and you know what? It's like I. This is what I was trying to think because you know it's a catnap. I don't have all the details, and I was seeing it from first person, which is usually very odd for yeah. me. I'm always okay. a third person dreamer, but I was in first person in this dream, which I think is interesting. So I'm not sure how old I was because I couldn't see yeah, myself. Yeah. But honestly, it doesn't really matter. I mean, not much has changed. I will still be happy <laughs> every back to school year when I don't have kids, but when pens oh, and markers yeah. and post-its are on sale, it's like, happy If you're day. feeling nostalgic and you want to buy my kids school supplies, I'll let you. I'll let, I'll let you do that, Brooke. <laughs> She'll give you her PayPal. <laughs> oh no no no! You're you're paying for it, and you can take them out. Me? Yes. It's a small fortune. Oh, I would love to. <laughs> I don't want to pay for it, but I'll take them. Yeah. Can we like meet halfway? <laughs> you know, I'll love I every know. second of shopping with them. I just like, don't want to take Brooke them to would be the like, register. Are, no. are, are you sure you want the the purple? Because it doesn't match your purple notebook. The, you, you sure you sure like, you want the red one? Let's think of match. your classes. What color is I'd history? Like, let's pull out your it schedules. It seems like a yellow to me. Okay. That is a yellow. Let me get you your yellow. Get Math? It. Get Never it. liked you it. Know That's going to be like yeah. a, a brown. Black? <laughs> Not brown. <laughs> but you Give me know, science. you feel it, right? You feel the colors. They're green for science. As, Vir- yeah. As Virgos, we pick our we colors. Do. I know it's ve- very different for most people, but it is very, very important for Virgos. Agreed. Agreed. Yes, yes. So that was my catnap that I thought you might enjoy. Brooke, thank you so much for sharing your dream. I love that we're getting more from you these days. So amazing. And Bestie, if you're enjoying the show, if you're a dreamer like we are, we would love if you would 
support our show. And you can do that by going to remolations.com slash support. There's lots of ways you can support our show. You can submit a dream. You can follow us on social. You can join our Facebook group. And you can also join our sleepover squad. And our sleepover squads where we have extra behind the scenes content, cut cut videos, th- things that make the cutting room floor that we throw in there that are just fun. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of good ones last week that you'll want to check out as well as extra cat naps mm-hmm. and our live shows. If you want to go over to remolations.com slash support, anything you can do would be amazing. We would greatly appreciate you for that. So thank you, Bestie. So, Mindy, I wanted to bring back one of our favorite games. <laughs> okay. Guilty or not guilty of sleepwalking crimes. Yay! Okay. Yay! <laughs> okay. So actually, I should, to be fair... In general, moving forward, when we do this, it should probably be guilty, not guilty, insane. Okay. Throw that extra. Okay. Yep. So those are your three. Those those are your three choices. Got it. Okay? I'll write it down. All right. In 2001, while vacationing on Catalina Island, California, Stephen Wrights murdered his lover, Eva Weinfurtner, who is married to another man at the time. Ooh. It, mm, but he murdered her in the most brutal fashion. Okay. 2001. Okay. We're right? Not that, I mean, it, it doesn't yes, seem like 2001, that. 2001, it's not. <laughs> it, it is that I long mean, ago. I it, mean, it's 20 years ago. <laughs> I never thought I'd be able to say, hey, that, that was 20 ago. years ago. And now I can even say like 40. That okay, that's stuff. That's it's in the 2000s. Stupid. It's in the 2000s. <laughs> We're in the right century here, people. Wrights smashed her head with a flower pot, leaving shards in her scalp, dislocated her arm, punctured her with a plastic fork, fractured her wrist, ribs, jaw, facial bones, and skull, and was wielding a pocket knife, left three gaping stab wounds on the back of her neck. That's a lot of weapons. Ouch! Ouch! That's Ouch, that seems like an, a lot, a right? A tool belt of weaponry. Yeah, like it. really? Wright's claimed to have no memory of mm-hmm, the crime. Sure. Though he also said that he had brief flashbacks to the murder in which he believed he was being attacked by an intruder. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mindy. You're the judge jury in this one. What do you think? Guilty, innocent, or insane? And Stephen, that was that was her lover, right? So this woman was Correct. married. To That's the okay. one who we're, we're talking about, Stephen. Yes. Well, I think that here's the reason: if you have that many, that much time to find that many weapons, thank you. I think that you're enjoying this. Unfortunately for the victim, you're enjoying it. You want to make mm-hmm. sure she's tortured in multiple ways. I don't know what his motive was. I mean, he. Was sleeping, but whatever. Right. I think <laughs> that's not I really think, a motive. I mean, I definitely a crime of passion. I mean, because you're just gonna grab all these weapons that are around you. The plastic fork. Ugh, don't like that one. Yeah, plastic fork. Like, ouch. I mean, that this had to take does time. Seem like last minute, right? Or like, yeah, and also it wasn't last minute. Like, I don't think uh, the fork's not enough. I'm gonna bludgeon you with a flower pot. There's a lot yeah. of. Different things happen. And if it was really this. someone who was intruding into your home or wherever they were on vacation in a hotel, I think you would just try to get out. Like why why would you yeah. spend so much time? Mm-hmm. You would incapacitate the intruder and then leave. You wouldn't stay there for a long period of time, I would no. think. So I'm going with I'm going mm. with guilty. Okay. Ding ding ding! You are two a for winner, two. Mindy. Okay. Two for two. Okay. So the jury didn't buy his sleepwalking claims as the prosecution showed numerous incidences of Wright's domestic mm, abuse dick. of Weinfurtner. Fucking an asshole. Such a dick. Including one instance in which he threatened her with a knife and told her he'd gut her like a fish. No. Guilty as fuck, you dick. Oh, That's my That's what I say. Good job, Mindy. Yeah, I don't. Uh, and so it. do we know what his sentence is? Is he in jail, I hope? And is he going to remain there for a whole a long time? I hope so. I actually have to follow up on the sentence, but I do like the sign that the jury didn't buy his sleepwalking. Good. 
He deserves to be in jail for the rest of his damn life for killing that poor girl. I mean, no one deserves that. For no that. one deserves that. No one deserves that. Good job, Mindy. Thank she you. She is the perfect judge, jury, and jury. executioner, as it may be. I don't know if I would be okay with that job. <laughs> judge I, and jury, I let's mind, say. <laughs> I wouldn't mind serving on a jury. I have never. Have you ever had jury duty? One of those lovely things we get to do here in the States that um, we get to be a part of our process. I've been called for jury duty, but I never got picked to be a juror. So okay. I was at the place all day and they call different numbers. You have a yeah. number and you go in and they ask you different questions. My number wasn't even in recalled. Mm-hmm. I feel like I would have been a good juror, but yeah. my number wasn't even called to go in front. And it's all random. Right. And then once they get however many they need they're like yes. done i'm like yeah. i sat there all fucking day did you I get like 10 bucks or like, something for that i don't even know how much it's it was much. i know i didn't it's get not. in trouble for being off work yeah. like i have an excuse for yeah. being off you work you get to get off work they cannot they fire the you for something grossest like that. hamburger Ew. i ever had in my life i'll just take some but vending machine chips thank you yeah you know what next time yeah. just, do, just that. do that i just had wished they had called my number and i at least gotten to like talk to someone but no i sat there for eight hours in this room it's interesting how some people yeah. will get called multiple times in their life like within years of each other i'm like i've been a registered voter and that's usually what they go off right but i, I wouldn't be a bad guess i've been eligible since 18 and at 42 i still have not been called i wouldn't mind it i've only been once and it was I, when no, I, I, take that back. I did Chicago i did later. get called it was one of those things you had to call the night before and they must have settled out of court so i didn't ever have to go in. Oh. So not, I didn't even get as far as you on the game board. Well, okay, then I don't feel so bad because I just wanted to be asked questions. Like, I didn't know anything about the case. Just bring me in. Am I going to be a good It would have to not? be very hard if it was a case that involved, like, children or, you know what I mean? Like, Shh, animals. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, as much as like, we, we enjoy true, true crime, it would be very hard to sit through yeah. and watching a victim's family or... Hearing the details of a word. Like, it is especially uh, if it's a crime like yeah. that, and it's not like something smaller where you'd be like, okay, traffic court. This sucks, yeah, you did go through like, that red light. No, yeah, traffic court. But like when you're seeing like images, yeah, that would be so hard of dead bodies, and yeah, oh god, could you imagine? I it. I, I I applaud anyone that's ever had jury duty, no matter what the case, because it can't be easy no. for anyone. No. But I still wanted to be questioned. I still wanted to be questioned. I, I didn't want to be released without even giving my chance. Well, Brooke, maybe oh, well. you still have you still have many years ahead of you to be chosen. No, no, no. Don't put that juju <laughs> on me. My jury duty hopefully is over. I can get over like that. I'm they good. didn't I'm pick good. me. <laughs> I'm just fine. How was your week? Oh, my week's been crazy oh, busy just with work. I'm so exhausted every night. I... You said it's a lot more physically demanding being on your feet all day, which is hard. Well, yeah, of course it is. I mean, working in an office for what, like 20 years, (laughs) at least 15 years or so, it's a whole different experience when you can't sit down and you're like, God damn, my legs are tired. God damn, everything's tired. Everything hurts. Everything hurts. Totally makes sense. And it's just constant moving and helping, but I'm really enjoying it. And the days fly by. So it's like, and I'll get healthier too, you mm-hmm. know, being able to move around more and like not just be sitting at a desk. That is good for you. Yeah, that'd be good. Holy shit, today was a sweaty one. <laughs> no. Wait till get the air conditioning cranked. It's only March and it's still like snowing. Yeah. It's supposed to snow it's tonight. March. But let's turn on that air. It's supposed to snow tonight, but I'm going to turn the air on tonight just as a rebel. <laughs> now, you must be releasing steam because you did send me a video of you and you reminded me to ask you about this on the podcast. It was you dancing to one of my favorite artists, Jimmy Buffett. You were dancing to Margaritaville, yeah. and you said something about yeah. old people and ask about it on the podcast. So, <laughs> can we share? Can we share this video? Yeah, of course. Okay, right. of we'll course. put it up um, on our Facebook group if you guys want to see Brooke dancing. It's not great, but um, it looks like you're having fun. Oh, of course I was having fun. That's all that matters. So I was out with my friend Sydney, and she had two free drink coupons. 
to this local bar. Awesome. And so, and it's like more like a winery. It's like an upscale place, okay. right? Um, okay. So I said, yeah, hey, we'll go. And they don't have like a full menu, but you can get decent stuff. Okay. She, so she's like, we'll have dinner and use our tickets there. And then, you know, maybe we'll go out after because it was St. Patrick's Day. Oh, okay, fun. So we get there. The place is hopping Ooh. with 65 to 90 year olds. I swear to God. Lovely. Swear to God. And I'm like, Sydney, have you been here before? She's like, I have, but I have never seen this much of a party Fun. atmosphere. It's like there's there was a live it. band playing. She's like, never seen that. And it's obviously an older crowd, but like. Hey, good music's good music, was right? Was it like a weekend? Was it like a Saturday night? Yes, Ooh. it was a weekend. It was a Saturday Those old night. old people are get, getting so, down on the weekend. I yeah. was like... How, how early? Was it, or was it early? And getting are we talking like 3, 4 o'clock? Are we talking no. like, di- like later? No, evening? it was probably like 7. Ooh, that's late for Yeah, them. so I was really surprised as well. And I think she was too, yeah. especially since... I had never been there, and she had several times. Yes. She's like, I'd never know. seen this, but we couldn't find a seat, and it was. I was like, kind of walking back and forth, and it was almost. I told her, I said, "Hey, Sydney, do you think if I shimmy for that table over there, they'll <laughs> give it to us like as a joke?" Their backs were to us at sure. this point, right? Okay. No sooner did they say that. I mean, it has to be pure coincidence. This guy stands up and he's like, "Do you ladies need a table? We're leaving," and we're like, "Yeah." I don't even have to shimmy so for that. So we sit down. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't, I don't have, have to use to my wows? Um, my shimmy wows? I don't. My shimmy wows. So they're kind of standing up. We sit on the same side of the table, but they're still standing up, kind of putting on their coats. Uh-huh. All of a sudden, Margaritaville comes up. Love it. The lady, like, is mid-zipping up her coat. <laughs> Margaritaville comes on. She immediately unzips the <laughs> she coat. She is my soul sister. Just throws it away, runs to the dance floor and grabs me on the way. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> all right. We're dancing. We're doing this thing. And you gave me your table? I'll dance with We're you. doing this. So that's why Sydney was filming. She was so happy that it was me. <laughs> Not her. She knew I would do it. You would. You made that woman's day, she, Brooke. She, I mean, we had a good time. We did. She stayed for like another one or two songs, nice. I think. Like, good. and then I went back up there by myself a few times. I'm like, it was good. You, feel, you feeling that vino? Time, you want to get the dance moves yeah, going? I was feeling that vino, and I was feeling that eighty something crowd. Man, maybe I need to like look elsewhere. <laughs> I mean, they're the ones out partying. Um, that's what. <laughs> hope to God that's that me at eighty. Like, bring me yeah. to a wine bar and let me dance to. Jimmy Buffett with a live band. Yeah, I'm and grab people on the dance floor. I want that life. I want that life. Bring me with you. That's yes. going to be us someday. It will be. That is going to be us. But it's just wild because Sydney has been there so many times and never seen a live band, never seen this type of crowd, nothing. So I'm like, where are all these old people following this band and just jamming? It was so great. Fun. I had a great time. <laughs> oh, fun. And I knew I, you would like it because it was Jimmy Buffett. It was fun. What about your week? What happened? Oh, um, well, I could take this one or t- one of two ways. <laughs> Let's see. I, okay, now I'm nervous. Um, okay, I'll, I'll save one for Sleepover <laughs> Squad. But okay, so this is weird. Okay, I took my dog out in the yard, like our backyard. He's got like a lead out there, so I tie up Kingston in the backyard. Yeah, he's out there. He's having a good time. Bark, and all of a sudden, I hear him barking. He's like a, another dog walking by. So I go out there to take him off his leash. And all of a sudden, I hear this awful, like, I, I see, like, some Canadian geese flying overhead. And then I hear this awful sound. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't even explain the sound. I don't like, Mindy, I don't like that sound. What's and, happening? Like, a hundred feathers fall from the sky into our yard, and I don't see a goose. I don't know what had happened. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if he ran into another goose. Something attacked this goose in the mid- sky. I, I don't know, but it was so surreal. All of these goose feathers start like falling from the sky like rain, and I'm like looking at. I'm just looking around like did, no one else saw this except for my dog. <laughs> like, <laughs> And even Kingston's like and looking around, he was like probably what? going crazy. He was going crazy, and He's I was like, like "Where, where's the bird? 
where's the bird? And then I was like, you know what? I've got I've got our like cameras in the backyard. I have like, you know, our nest cams, our <gasps> security cameras. Yes. So I'm like, yes, I'm going to go see if I can figure out. Now I've got to know what this mystery is of this goose. I do, this too. This fiasco. There was no goose in our yard. Like, I don't I don't know. Mystery. And so I go, I pull it up. Yeah, battery's dead. I was like, damn it. The one time something happened <laughs> oh that I need to look at my camera <laughs> for. And it, nothing. Nothing. Oh, my God. Battery's dead. Batter, battery's dead. So I don't know whatever happened to that little goose. There's too many. And it was anyways, just one. Mindy, what was that noise that the goose made? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. It was like a, almost like a I, t- turkey. I got it now. I attack. know. I know. I know what it is now. It's like a honking turkey attack. I don't know. It was. It was awful. But you don't want to be involved in a honking turkey attack. I can guarantee it. And no one will ever know That's except for not me where and you Kingston. Want to find yourself. We're the only one that experienced <laughs> yes, that phenomenon. Kingston. And there was like and you don't want to be feathers part of that. everywhere. And then they blew away in the wind and feathers gone. But like, what happened mid air? I don't, don't want to know. Actually, you know, I don't want to know. know. So weird. <laughs> Anyways, you that know. was the only thing that was interesting that happened to me this week. Well, yeah. I would agree that that would be very interesting. <laughs> but I'm glad we both made it out of our week we safely. Did. And bestie to you too. <laughs> Hope everyone's had a great week. If you're enjoying this podcast, bestie, do us one favor, and that's to tell your friend about the show. Again, that's how we keep increasing our listenership so we can keep doing this each and every week for you. So make sure you tell your best friend about the show. Tell your favorite Muppets character that's stuck in a duel. Oh. Hmm. Tell your college roommate that had the nastiest, dirtiest sheets around. Ew. And tell that girl whose house you went over to score, but then you found a fish dog. Yeah, tell tell them about the podcast. (laughs) That's how we grow again, and we appreciate... Each and every one of you. Thank you so much to Rebecca. Oh, Bex, please keep <laughs> submitting your dreams. They're so amazingly vivid how you write. We love every second. So please keep submitting them. Thank you so much. Also, for all our catnap submissions, we had an absolute great time. So keep them coming. All right, Bestie. That wraps up another episode. And we want you to have an amazing week. Catch up on some sleep. And until next time, sweet sweet dreams, dreams, bitches. bitches. That was a good one. We did it. And I'm going to go make the kids dinner now. So I'm up.